Hi, Stephen here, Not Just Cables. Um, been a while since I put up a video on YouTube and so on, but got this little tank which I bought quite a while ago, um, which is one of my little projects that I've, I've been working on. Um, probably did this uh, probably more than a year ago, uh, probably um, maybe even a couple of years ago now actually. But um, I basically bought this tank um, from a second hand shop, cost me about $20, and it didn't come with a controller, so um, it was kind of pointless really but um, it still looks alright but it didn't didn't have a few bits and pieces as you can see it's missing a few things in here and um, a few things have fallen off it over the time um, so basically I started looking online to see if anyone else had um, had one of these and figured out other methods of controlling them and I came across a guy Ian Renton that's um, he's got his own website which I can show you in a second um, I'll bring this up um, it's just ianrenton.com um, so that's his, his website on there um, so he's done a raspberry tank basically and that's pretty much a raspberry pi controlling the the built-in controller inside the tank so that um, you can use all the functions on the tank and basically it has a web interface um, that he's designed and um, that's the controls there, it has a built-in camera so you got a camera function so you can actually see what the tank is doing um, you back forward, you fire, you turret um, left and right and also left and right turning as well so that's pretty much all that, oh actually yeah, sorry there's a little ignition one down the bottom there as well if you can see that now, should be in focus um, and if we go back to the tank um, I'll just focus in again so on the front there, that's just a bit of blue tech holding in the camera. Um, nothing too special about that, but it's just a standard Raspberry Type Pi um, camera. And I've actually unclipped all the cables and screws and everything in here because it's quite hard to unclip them when holding the camera. But um, as you can see, it's all motorised and controlled in the top. The camera cable which clips into the Raspberry Pi, it's just a standard Raspberry Pi camera. Um, in the back there is just all the standard controllers and the motors and stuff for the tank. Had to do a few repairs on those because the, the um, one of the gears and so on was was slipping. So there's actually a motor for each side. Uh, I think you can't really see them, but there's one underneath um, down the bottom here and one up the top, left and right um, tracks basically to allow it to turn left and right. Um, then you have that's a wee um, smoke generator, you put uh, I think it's oil or whatever inside that and it um, spits out sort of smoke never actually used it that bit, it's not actually hooked up um, at this stage um, the speaker I had to take out of its case so that's why it's just sort of sitting there couldn't fit that in because it had quite a big box that sort of went around it um, which I had to take out um, so I could actually just sit there loosely in there, it doesn't actually seem to move anywhere, it seems to go okay that's the cable that controls the top turret um, disconnected at the moment this thing here is just a little um, makeshift voltage regulator it's just a standard um, voltage regulator IC with a couple of capacitors on board uh, that basically takes the 7.2 volt um, rechargeable battery in the base of this thing down to 5 volts so that the Raspberry Pi can function correctly um, only thing I'd say is that it's probably better not using that um, just having a separate like 5 volt power supply um, for the Raspberry Pi because what happens is um, when the motor in the back there um, draws too much power it actually draws the power away from the Raspberry Pi so the Raspberry Pi shuts down and then restarts again when the motors um, aren't drawing power again um, now the Raspberry Pi um, is actually being powered off the IO header so I'm just using a plus and minus input just there I think those instructions are on um, on the website as well um, and then the controller pins are just in the, near the end there I don't know if you can quite see that but it's just two wires that it uses and they um, I'll just move that out of the way a second just got a bit of paper stopping that from shorting on everything um, there's just a wee transistor controller board there it's just an interface between the original tank controller board and the Raspberry Pi 
So it's basically a, a two wire to three wire system. Puts in um, basically it just puts special codes um, to this controller that this controller picks up, and then does the specific features and functions that the tank requires. Um, I won't bother taking out the controller, but it's basically a three wire plug on the bottom of this this board, um, and then yeah, just controls it. So. Uh, the other thing now, yeah, it's actually um, got a little Wi-Fi dongle in it, so I'm just using a little Edamax, um standard little Wi-Fi um, USB adapter in the end here, um, and what that's doing is it's acting like a, a wireless access point effectively, so I can actually set up a laptop, connect to it, and then um, uh, bring up the web interface that this the Raspberry Pi is running that actually controls the tank. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll put it all back together um, and then fire it up and then show you it running as best I can.